Hi everyone, my name is Steve. Today we're going through lead code problem 954, array of double pairs. Let's take a look at the problem first. It's basically asking, it's giving us an array of integers with even length, and it's asking us to return true if and only if it's possible we can reorder this array such that for every single element, we can always find its double number. It's also in this array and it's at a doubled index. That's what it means. For example, I is always in half of the array length. It's greater than or equal to zero, but it's always less than half of the array length. For example, this one, i equals to zero, and then its index i is its index equal to zero, i equal to zero, two times zero, which is zero, zero plus one is one. So, which means this number, it's, we can find its double number, which is six, to be in this place, right? We can reorder this. For example, put six into this position and then one, to, one into this position. We can always do this for every single number in this array, as long as i is within the first half of the array indexes. That is not true for this case. That's why it's returning false, right? So let's take a look at, at, at a correct example, which is this one. We can reorder this array into something like this or something like this, so that when i equals to zero, then i equals to zero, two times zero is zero, zero plus one is one. We can get one. This is the index one, which is minus four, which is exactly twice this number. That's why it's called double number, double pairs, right? And then when i equals to one, i equals to one, what, what do we get? When i equals to one, two times one, that is two, a two at this position, zero, one, two, this is two, this is two, right? two times two, that is four. Can we find a four? Yes, there is a four. And it happens to be that this one, when i equals to one, i equals to one, one times two is two, two plus one is three. So it happens to be this four is at the index three position, right? Zero, one, two, three. So that means we can reorder the original array into this array so that it meets this requirement. Or Another format is this. We can reorder the original array into something like this, but still it meets this condition for every single i within this range. That's the problem. And after understanding this problem, how can we tackle this problem? Let's take a look at our slides. The example test case is this given original correct test case, four minus two, two and four. So first step, what we want to do is that we want to build a hash map. The key of the hash map is going to be the value in this given array. And the value of the hash map is going to be the frequency of how many times this given number appears in this array. And then another tricky problem comes is how do we traverse this hash map in what order, right? For example, if we just traverse this hash map in the original order, that's not going to give us the correct answer. For example, if we start with four, four's double is going to be eight, right? But do we have an eight in this given array or in this hash map after we, after we constructed this hash map? No, it doesn't exist, right? But that doesn't necessarily mean that this is not a valid case that we can not reorder it so that it meets the requirement. So in what order, how do we traverse this hash map becomes a key. Thanks to Alex Weiss, he brought up a very good algorithm. I'll put a link to the solution down below in the video. How we can traverse the order is that we can sort this given array by its absolute values so that we can always find the correct answer if it's possible in this order such that we sort this array. This is not a random order. This order is sorted by its absolute values. So it could be minus two, two, or it could be two minus two. As long as its absolute values are sorted, then we're good. Why do we do that? Let's take a look. First, understand how we are going to traverse through this hash map to find whether it's possible. The idea is that if we traverse through this hash map in this array, for example, if we go through the first one is minus two, what we're trying to find is in this hash map, does there exist the double of this number, right? Which is minus four exist in this hash map and its frequency, its count is not less than or equal to zero yet. If that's the case, then we're happy. That's a happy case, which means we find there's a double pair in this hash map, in this given array that we can reorder so that this number and its double number can be put in the correct position. At that point, we'll just decrement this number and its double pairs frequency 
by one. Then we'll just continue to move on. Since we are decrementing all of the frequencies, at some point, all of the frequencies is going to be zero, right? Because we have encountered its double number and its original number. At some point, we'll decrement all of the numbers frequency to be zero. So whenever we meet a number's frequency is zero, we'll just move on. That means we have traversed through this number and it's double pairs already. Then we'll just move on. But at any point when we are traversing through this order, if we cannot find its double pair in this hash map or it's in its hash map, but its frequency is less than or equal to zero, that means this is not possible that we can reorder such a array into the correct position to meet the problem requirement. At that point, we can just return false. If we didn't break out throughout this entire traversal, that means everything is good, that we can reorder, then we'll just return true at the very end. For example, if we just go through minus two, we'll traverse, say minus two is double is four. No, minus two is double is minus four. We'll see if minus four does exist in the hash map, and if it does, we'll see if its frequency is greater than or equal to one. If that is the case, then we're happy. Uh, we'll decrement both minus two and minus four is frequency to decrement it by one. That is one, one becomes zero, zero. Then we'll continue to move on. Next one is two. Then we will check if two's double is four. Does four exist in this, in this hash map? Yes, it does. And does four's frequency is greater than or equal to one? Yes. And then we'll decrement both four and two by one. So their frequencies both become zero. That is the next step. Both two and four, their frequencies become zero. And then after traversing these two numbers, we come here, minus four. We'll see first if minus four's frequency, it's zero already, minus four is zero. Then we'll just move on as we just said, right? And then we'll continue to this number, four. Four's frequency is also zero. Then we'll just also move on. Then we have finished traversing through this given array list in this order. That means we can return true, which is a happy case, which means we can reorder such an array into the correct indexes such that every single number could form a valid double pair. That's the algorithm. Now let's put the idea into the actual code. Let's take a look. First, we'll form a hash map. Map, new hash map. Uh, next, we're going to put everything into this hash map. Again, the key is the number itself. The value is going to be get all default. It's going to be the frequency. Default number is zero. This is it. And then next, we're going to form another temporary array which is going to help us sort by its absolute value. We'll just call it B. Length is integer. Then we'll put everything here. I plus plus. B, I, A, I. And then we'll sort this temporary array by its absolute value, which is here. We'll write a customized comparator comparing int. What we have here is going to use its absolute value. Java has such a static method. You can use and then we'll just traverse through this sorted array by its absolute value. First, what we're going to do is, is check if this number is frequency is already zero. That means we'll just continue. That means we have found this number and its double pairs, and we have decremented both their frequencies to be zero already. So we can simply move on. Next, what we'll check is, we'll check if get or default this number, uh, this number default is zero, which means we have finished traversing through every single one of them. If that is the case, greater than or equal to zero, we'll just return false. That means not this number, actually, it's the two times of this number. Remember, what, what we're trying to find is always the, the double number, right? We're trying to find the double number, whether this double number still has a valid frequency in this hash map. If it doesn't, we'll just return false. Otherwise, we'll just keep, um, keep decrementing all of the frequency of this number. 
get it by one we do the same for this number itself for this number itself right so so after that we'll just we can just do this if I return true here why do we decrement it by two that means we have found this number and its double pair they're both valid in this given um, in this given hash map in in this given hash map so we're good so now let's uh, run through some test cases this is a this is a very good test case false that's good then let's run through this happy case let's see okay that's expected now let's run through this as well should pass as well um, false true false false true false okay now let's submit and see accept it that's cool um yeah all credit goes to Alex Weiss. This is a great algorithm and this is a great problem as well. I hope this video helps you understand the algorithm and the problem itself. If that's the case, please do me a favor and gently tap the like button. That's going to help a lot with the YouTube algorithm. And don't forget to subscribe to my channel as we continue to go through a lot of very classic lead code problems. That's it for today's problem. I'll see you guys in the next one.